All right, guys, what's up? You guys know what we're going to talk about today. We're going to be responding to Filion. We're going to be responding to all the steroid accusations, just everything about that. For the past eight months, it's been crazy. You know, I've obviously gotten steroid accusations in, you know, all my years of lifting. I've lifted for like five and a half years now. But ever since he came out with that video, it's been like crazy and the accusations haven't stopped whenever I post a video. That's all it's about. And I kind of just want to be honest and just literally say everything, put everything out there. So we're going to start right now. What we're going to be responding to in this video is Phil, the, all the steroid accusations, SARMs, programming, you know, if I actually use my program, that was, a, that was a common question as well, and my bench press progression. So let's get right into it. Have I used steroids? No. Have I used SARMs? Yes. So with SARMs, I started taking them around this time last year. I had been strength training for like five months prior to taking them, and you know, it was solely my decision to take them. You know, you guys know, you know, my dad has been open about his steroid use. Everyone accuses me, you know, everyone's like, yo, you, you give you some steroids, probably you do this, you do that, you influence them in the wrong way in that way. But the thing is, <coughs> the thing is, he doesn't know much about SARMs. Maybe he's read an article or two, or he's learned from me, but it was solely my decision. I researched it online, you know, I went through forums, I looked at other people's like blood tests and stuff, and I made the decision myself to take SARMs or them. So I started taking them around that time and I took them for four months. So up until around like probably early January, around the time that I hit my 385 bench. I said I've only, you know, I did them for the first four months, but I've done more like since, you know, October to January. Uh, for this summer during my cut, I used them as well. And yeah, those are the, you know, the two times, the two cycles I did of SARM. So I just wanted to put that out there. For my second cycle, I used, I think I just used Austrain. I, I just MK66, MK2866. So just wanted to put that out there. Want to be as clear. So yeah, back to the video. I guess let's just talk about my bench press progression within that as well, because that's where most of it happened. So I remember with my bench press progression, I first started taking them around October. And that time I'd been doing like my crazy bulk for probably a few weeks. Um, I'd say, yeah, I went from like 175 to 208. Um, I was probably one, 180 in October. One thing that Phil said that I have to say right now is that he said that my strength increased rapidly without me gaining much body weight, which is definitely not true. I went from benching 275, weighing 175 on a cut, to hitting 385 on that day weighing 208 pounds like the fattest i've ever been like literally look at my face in that in that video like I, I, it's it's terrible like i actually can't believe it i took them and started in october i think i went from like like kind of being able to hit 315 like one month uh with like uh wraps around my elbows to like hitting 385 like fucking air. I mean, no, to like hitting 335 like air. Like it was, it was crazy. It was definitely the five to 7,000 calories a day and the SARMs. What SARMs did I take? I took S4, LGD, and MK677, which is a, a, which is a secretagogue, not really a SARM, but you know, it's very well associated with them. I'm not, gonna about to, I'm not gonna talk about dosing or anything, but those are the first three that I took for those four months. Yeah, so I went from like barely being able to hit 315, hitting 335, and then I think on the same time, I think the same day I hit 335, I went through for 355 and like caused like a really bad shoulder injury. I definitely like tore something and I couldn't lift. I was like, I couldn't bench press for like, I don't know, like a month, month and a half. Uh, I still have this injury to this day. Like it's still, my shoulder just hasn't felt the same. But yeah, so I went from that, tried 355, couldn't do it took like four to six weeks off, then went, got right back into it. And I started just progressing every single month. You know, my food was on point. I was eating more than I ever had. Um, you know, my supplementation, as everyone likes to say, you know, my SARMs, um, you know, I was, I was doing all that. And you know, my training was on point as well. You know, I took training like religiously day in and day out. So for those four months, I was progressing pretty fast at the end, weighing 208, I hit 385 and that is that. Also, in that same month that I hit 385, I also hit 335 on the incline bench press at Steve Cook's Grand Gym opening. We're gonna talk about that right now. So a lot of people don't believe that I, you know, that was my first time incline benching, right? 
Thing is, is I do remember now, if you literally scroll back to like my first few posts on Instagram, I was 13. I remember for the first three to five months of lifting, it was a big goal of mine to get 135 or get, get 245 plates on the Smith machine on incline. So, you know, I would have an adjustable bench. I put it up a little bit and I'd say that's literally the only incline I did for the first three to five months. I'll play a video right now. I was, you know, I was just like repping it. Yeah, that, that was my main goals. But the thing is, is you're not gonna see any more footage of me doing that because I, I didn't do incline bench press. Like I know that sit, sounds weird and it's crazy that I easily fucking threw up 315 and then 335. But the thing is, is it's not like, it's not like I wasn't training my chest, you know? Like i had been training for like five years before, no, I'd been, yeah, I'd been training for a whole four years before that doing, you know, incline dumbbell, you know, I, I was easily within those four months that I was doing that like crazy bulk. I was like, I don't know, I, I got to the point where I think I could rep hundreds on incline after doing like a whole programmed bench press session, I could do hundreds for like 15. So, you know, it's not like I wasn't doing anything for incline. So I, I don't know, I gotta just have to put that out there. Like I, maybe I hit it once or twice, one set here, one set there you know, within four years, literally in my dad's gym where I work out every single day, there isn't an incline bench press. Like I would have to, you know, go roll uh, an adjustable bench into the squat rack and then start benching. And it's just like, I don't know, I just don't do that. I didn't do that. I've never done that. I still don't, you know? So I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. That was pretty much my first time ever doing incline and ever maxing on incline. This is way better than the last video. I, the last video I was like slurring my words. I've, I've only had four hours sleep, so. Oh yeah, all right. I got a question because I put out a Q&A on my Instagram a few days ago. Any questions, I'll answer anything regarding, you know, the, the topic of this video. And one of the main questions was if I actually even used my program. And so, yes, yes I did. I think I have, a, I, you know, I have a funny story. So, you know, I put out my program with the company Athlete and they flew me out to London. And when I was there, what I was supposed to do was create my program, film my program and have a meet up there with, you know, a bunch of people in London. And so when we were in the offices and we were creating my program, I had already sent the program to the person I was creating the program with on Athlete. And they were pretty surprised by that because they said normally people literally just come in here, create some bullshit thing with them, and then just fucking pop it out to their followers. And so I thought that was pretty funny because I had literally been testing my program for three to four months prior with Blake because we were both tweaking it and creating it. We both created it, so I thought that was pretty funny. Oh, fucking traps. All right. Even my friends, literally Blake that lives with me, always says this. He's like, what do you do for traps, my guy? Obviously, quoting Phil. And so, in that video, Phil was like, yo, like, what do you do for traps? Like, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Around, the clips that he was actually showing in the video, around that time, I actually was deadlifting. But I haven't really trained traps, like, I haven't done shrugs or anything to isolate them since I was, like, 14. Uh, I'm gonna show a clip when I was, like, 13, 14 here. And this is when I was like shrugging like 90s with the dumbbells and I was like crazy about training traps. But the thing is, is like what I'm doing in this video that you're seeing right now is I'm rolling my shoulders forward. Like there's two different types of most musculars that I do. I used to do this one a lot and that would just pop out my shoulders and make me look wide. But now what I always do is I just roll everything together and bunch up, which makes my traps pop out. And it's literally all due to posing. Like, I've already made a video about this, but it's all due to posing. Um, yeah, I don't really train my traps. I just literally round them and squeeze them when I do that pose. And it makes a crazy difference if you actually know how to. Even with someone that has no trap development, it'll make it even a little bit bigger for anyone. I, I, that's what I believe. Yeah, that's that's just what it is. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I've already done this video one time and I'm, uh, fuck, I don't know. What, what else? Uh, oh, I guess a good question would be, it wasn't really asked, but like, if I will ever take steroids. And the thing is, is like, you know, as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, but like, I'm literally, I'm, I am surrounded people, but I am surrounded by people that do take steroids. Like, and the thing about it is like, I've obviously always thought it, I literally, a few weeks ago, I called my dad up and I was like, Hey, should I do this? Should I do that? Like, um, 
like I've, I've thought about it and you know, I've thought about it recently and I think I've just, it's always come back to like, I don't, I don't know. That's just like weird shit. Like you'll lose your fucking hair and like, like, you know, maybe like I, you know, my hormones won't be the same when I like come off steroids and you know, I'm literally 18. I've thought about this stuff obviously for like years before because I'm in this industry and because a lot of people that you guys see do them. And so it's always been a thought of mine, but I've always just been pretty scared to do it. And SARMs seemed like the safe alternative, even though we, you know, there isn't much research on them at all. Um, so, you know, I don't know. It seemed like a safer alternative. I did them. You literally just fucking squeeze it in your mouth like a liquid. Uh, you can take pills, but that's what I did. I took the liquid form. Um, you know, it's not like you're injecting shit, but I'd say moving forward, uh, I don't know. There's just not much research on SARMs. So it's not obviously as safe, I guess, as steroids because there's years and years and years of research on steroids. You literally know what's going to happen. You know, you know, kind of. Obviously, it's based on, you know, your genetics and everything. Everyone's different, but there's just much more research. It's much more safe. So, yeah. I mean, I think I've just literally put out everything on the table. If you guys have any more questions, or if I haven't said anything that you guys want me to say, please, you know, DM me on Instagram. Comment down below. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I don't know. I just want to be as open as possible now. Uh, this is kind of like, you know, regardless of what's going to happen to me now, obviously there are people that like don't want me to say these type of things online. It's kind of like sensitive because no one really talks about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I want to be as open as possible. If you guys have any questions, like I said, just comment them down below, DM me. And I just want to say everything moving forward. Just want to be open and honest. And uh, I don't know. I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.